Well, we start off with a question from email tonight from Cynthia. She says, uh, someone gave me the scripture in Luke 9 about take up your cross daily. She said, I thought that I had already crucified the flesh. I'm not really trying to prove anyone wrong here, but I wonder what this scripture means. Didn't that happen before the cross? Am I to take anything from this scripture? Is it about daily choices? What does it mean? Well, Cynthia, I'm glad you brought this question to the broadcast tonight. You know, Luke chapter 9 does present us with an interesting phrase, take up your cross daily. And then, of course, in the other place it appears in the Gospels, it just says, take up your cross and follow me. So what's going on there? Do Christians need to die? Do Christians need to kill themselves spiritually? Do Christians need to somehow get rid of themselves and become new progressively through some sort of spiritual operation or spiritual surgery that they do? No, of course not. Uh, the new self, the new creation, does not need to be killed. God is not trying to kill us off. He already did. Uh, he did that when we were saved. When we were saved, we were placed into Christ's death, placed into his burial, and placed into his resurrection. So when we look at this passage in Luke chapter 9, what he's really saying is you need to do this in order to be saved, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to lose your life to gain it. You have to take up your cross and follow me. Well, where would they follow him to? They would follow him to Calvary. Why? In order to die. Well, that happened to us. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Romans 6, verse 6, our old self, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him. So this is something that has already happened to the believer. We took up our cross. We followed Jesus into death. We use the term born again all the time. Well, the only way you can be born again is if you first die. So death and resurrection, that's what real salvation is, and that is exactly what occurred to us on the day that we were placed into Christ Jesus. So as far as the word daily goes, you know, people have debated the existence of that word. Is it in the original and all of that business? Well, regardless, what we learn from an overview of the New Testament is this, that every day we can wake up and count ourselves dead to sin and alive to God. Notice that you can count yourself alive. You don't need to kill you. You don't need to get rid of you. You're not the old self anymore. You're not the old man, the old self, the old creation. You're a new self. You're a new man, a new creation, a child of God, raised up to newness of life, holy and blameless at the core. So understanding that is super important. People take scriptures out of context all the time. They say we've got to die daily because Paul said that, I die daily. Well, Paul was talking about physical suffering there, not spiritual death at all. He was talking about being attacked by wild dogs on his way, you know, on the road as an apostle, being attacked by wild beasts. So that was his, his meaning there. He was saying, I die daily for this message. I'm an apostle, you know, I'm out there suffering for the word of God, and he says, I die daily. He didn't mean for us to take those three words and spin it and twist it into some sort of morbid theology today where we need to get rid of ourselves. No, Christ already took us to the cross with him. We are raised, we are new, and wow, isn't that awesome to celebrate? So what do you do daily? You wake up and count yourself alive, which is very different from t trying to get rid of yourself. You know, the Bible says uh, that our old self died, but we hear this popular terminology, you've got to die to self, die to self, die to self. How many times as a Christian have you heard that? Well, you may be surprised to find that it's not in the Bible, that that phrase die to self is non-existent in the scriptures. The closest thing we have is Romans 6.6, 6, which I already quoted. Our old self died. So why would you try to die to self if your old self already died? And why would you try to get yourself to die if you're the new self? So here's what I'm saying. 
Self is not a dirty word. This is not Eastern mysticism. This is Christianity. Eastern mysticism would say empty yourself. Get rid of yourself. You must decrease. And we quote John the Baptist out of context. No, John the Baptist was saying his ministry was fading away because Christ's ministry was coming in. And somehow we spin this, again, we spin this into I'm a dirty worm and I've got to get rid of me. Not the case at all. We need to recognize this is not an Eastern mysticism. We are compatible with Christ. We are united with Christ. We are the new creation. He's not. We are. He made us a new creation so that we would be compatible with him. So that's how we can be, as Corinthians puts it, we're one spirit with him and we're united with him, as Romans says. There's a closeness there that he described in the vine and the branches back in the Gospel of John. So that has already become our reality. So you can see then that it's really important to not deny yourself. Wait, what? Did I say not deny yourself? Certainly Christians have heard teaching for decades on end, perhaps in churches all over the place, saying we need to deny ourselves. Well, again, that's Jesus telling us that our old self, and he's talking to Jews at the time, Jews who have not yet experienced Pentecost, Jews who have not yet experienced the born-again idea, of course not. Uh, they have not been indwelt by the Holy Spirit yet. So he says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. That would mean deny your old self. Should you deny your new self? Of course not. Don't deny your new self. Count yourself alive. Understand who you are in Jesus. So stop denying who you are. You know, it's interesting how words really matter. And in this case, the truth certainly sets us free. Learn who you are, be yourself, and express Christ all at the same time.